How are you, gentlemen? Uh, good. All right, let's call the meal into order. Roll call. Me off guard. I'm not ready. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell me when you're ready. You need one second. 714. Call to order. Okay. Mr. Bordenero. Mr. Fernandez. Here. Mr. Grady. Here. Mr. Holmes. Nope. Mr. No. Lamaglia. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Paradis. Here. You have a quorum. Okay. Let's pledge allegiance to the flag. It's a comment. Let's pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America. Here's the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Okay. It's nobody that's good. Oh, we got a bunch of approvals. Okay, let's do... Uh, Approve minutes. Let's have a motion for March 3rd, 21. Oh, okay, so we're going to let's have a motion for March 3rd, March 9th, March 10th, March 10th again, <laughs> March 17th, and 30th, and 30th, all of March. Can I have a second? Second. Discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the bond transfer. Number one. Number one. Go ahead. All budget. I didn't go ahead, Jerry. Uh, move to approve transfers of $240,866.65 as detailed in the company spreadsheet to cover higher than budgeted expenditures and the other Second. Discussion? Yeah. I got to find my sheet. I, I guess my question was um, we do transfers for water control. I think we did that. Um, there's been some question about whether that needs to be approved. We haven't had a definitive guidance on whether council and board of finance has to approve it, so we'll avoid a potential issue later on going forward. Yes. Figure approval over approving would not be a problem, but if somebody came back after the fact, uh, especially for this, because this particular item is needed for design. Um, the pipe actually on the Berlin Turnpike near the area where uh, Mr. Diadio is, is contemplating building. So I believe it's between the Blue Lobster. Yeah, the Blue Lobster area. Um, the pipe is only 16 inches there. For some reason, it goes down smaller. Really, it should have been pumped 20 inches before. So this is to transfer some money from one project that uh, they were going to do in East Berlin that they've deferred because they can and move the money here to get engineering in place to be able to do that work. All in favor? Aye. 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 Authorizing the issue of one million five hundred thousand dollars bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof and making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. Can I have a second? Second. Let's have a discussion. I I called Mr. Delaney. I said it's, it's not like fourteen million dollar deal that we did with the Bank of America. Oh, so explain. It wasn't my deal. <laughs> I know but it's, this is not like that deal. Um, this one is different. Um, what happens is every one of your bills, there's actually a fee. Businesses, individuals, everybody pays a fee into a fund at Eversource, and it's for energy conservation initiatives. What Eversource does is they're able to go out and give grants, essentially, to individual businesses and municipalities to help with conservation efforts. So this program actually utilizes that incentive, but they also have a bonus incentive they've added that expires June 30th of this year. That is subject to some discussion because they haven't hit the financial targets that Pura set for them. So there's currently, according to one of the developed, one of the contractors that we've talked with, there's a bit of a discussion between Pura and Eversource as to whether they should extend that. But that's the reason there's sort of a, a time crunch on this is to be able to get in and get the work done. What they essentially do is 
the contractors actually contract with us, but also with Eversource. Eversource actually pays them while they're doing the construction work. We then receive the, we will have on bill financing, 0% for four years for the net amount. So the big difference between the $14 million deal that we did and this is that one was based on credits, energy savings, et cetera, over the 20 year period. We received ZREC credits, which is essentially the solar panels selling energy back onto the grid. We get money for that. We also have energy savings as well as um, a, a uh, rate buy down that was approved by Pura where Eversource is supposed to pay us twice a year in amount. They're consistently late with that. So I will tell you that one of the first things that I inquired about when this first came up was, are we coming after the fact or before the fact? And the way the deal has been presented to us and the only way we'll bring it forward to the council is that we're actually financing the net amount. So we're not waiting for credits afterwards. We're not waiting for other. The payment on that financing is intended to come from energy savings. We'll be able to track this one a little bit better because once we go in with this project, my intent is to actually create a new line in the accounting. So when you receive your monthly reports where you have electricity, there would be another line, which would represent the debt portion of what we have to pay for those four years. Because we're going to pay an even amount for four years. And then you'll be able to see the electricity, that, that amount will come out of your electricity account. And then we should be at a minimum on budget, if we're on budget with the electricity after pulling those costs out, um, then we know that we realize the savings. Far simpler, um, we're not waiting around. The idea is to do this with Berlin High School so we can actually shut the lights off at night and control the energy costs. McGee Middle School, and then if, if the numbers still play out, Town Hall and Library Community Center. The two schools are the two biggest areas that we're looking at primarily because that's where the substantial cost is. The schools we spend in excess of $900,000 a year on electricity in, in aggregate for our schools. So an opportunity to save money annually is much greater there than it is say in town buildings and certainly smaller buildings. That's the gist of this. Bond Council has indicated to us that because it's on bill financing, it is considered a debt like instrument. That's why we're doing the bond ordinance. There's no intent to bond anything. But because it's debt, we're asking for the gross amount. The net amount is not going to be $1.5 million. The net amount is expected to be, if we do all four projects, less than a million dollars. Spread across the four years is about $250,000 in total of annual cost. So, so when, when you talk about debt, and, and you know, obviously that's what we're authorizing here, how's, how's this reflected in your financial statements? I'm just curious. If we do this, this will be reflected similar to the other energy lease program. So it will be in the debt, but as a, as a separate schedule. So if you think about our annual financial report, there's actually a page that has all of the various years of general obligation bonds and it has any notes. It also has our energy lease as well as golf cart leases, although those types of things. This would be down in that area. We would lease that would be below the general obligation bond, but we would be disclosing it. We would have to do an EMMA disclosure. Continuing disclosures require that if we've issued bonds, if we have bonds outstanding, we have to notify if we've done any off off balance sheet or non-general obligation bond issues. So we would we would notify them of what the net amount is for this. That lets bondholders know what we've done. We had to do the same thing with the other energy lease. So just so what is the 250000 over each for four years? So I guess I'm thinking what's the net cash flow? I mean, I'm trying to understand there's going to be savings right? The net cash flow, based on the initial numbers for the first four years, you can effectively think of it as zero. That essentially our savings will go to pay for this. That's the projection. And then after the four years, all of it would come to the town in savings. That's the projection. We have, we have received one vendor who laid out the whole plan, including 
a full inventory of each item at each location. They had the benefit of actually doing this work about three years ago, a high school project was going on, and this was actually tabled, it was considered as part of the project and tabled. We are actually getting three more quotes. Um, Eversource has identified several vendors who have the skill, the capability to do this and that they would be willing to work with on it. So when, when we've completed that, which we expect mid to late May, um, we will have four quotes and four proposals to be able to compare. So is that a guarantee? That's not a guaranteed savings. Not a guarantee, no. What are they quoting? What are these guys quoting? Um, what do you mean quoting? They're saying you four quotes. Yeah, they're gonna quote the project. So they're gonna look What's at it? the project. Yep. It's gonna be um, a switch from our existing lights to LED, as well as controls. So if you think about the high school, right now, there aren't really centralized controls. So I think about my office as an example. We have, we went through the energy project and there's actually control leverage. So I can leave my office, the lights are on, five, 10 minutes after I leave, the lights go off. I walk back in, they pop on. So we're, we're conserving energy that way. If you took that and applied it across the high school, the opportunity is substantial. Right now, there's actually a manual effort that custodians have to undertake if they wanted to go do that. So. Well, that's an interesting way you put that. If they wanted to go do that, because I, I, ironically, when I got on the board of finance, one of the first things I noticed driving home was owned by McGee, and every light in the parking lot was on. And this was nine nine thirty at night. I go up in the parking lot. There's not a car around. All the lights are on. Nobody's around. It's late fall, and it was like that all winter. Every light is on. You drive by the high school. Every light is on. Is there, instead of spending money in this, is there's nobody that can go around and turn off the lights at night? I mean, is that that complicated? Because for years, the janitors went out before they left the building and turned off the lights. I, I got an answer for that. I'd love to hear it. I do it because I live in the neighborhood. For years, the people in the back, I don't know, those lights would bother me. So, that happened years ago when I was in the board of finance. And what, what we were told that for security reasons, the police wanted those lights on in the parking lot in the fields because people would go and uh, party in the fields, or whatever, and the neighbors would complain and put the police at risk. And have to, that's why the lights are on at the school system. Okay, so then why are we putting a license to them? They, they, they won't turn off the lights because the police want them on. Well, this is that this is inside the building. This is inside inside the building, but as far as outside, it's for security reasons. So oh, everything's those are the big lights, though. Right, those are the lights. That are they wanted the, the lights up for security reasons. I don't think they need a wall on. That's, that, that's the answer we were given. That's reasons. not a great answer. Well, I mean, to me, I, I'd want to know. To me, did they explore other options like turning off the lights? Um. The other question I had is this is going to be four years and that's that's the length of the total. It's not going to, it'll be paid off in four years. That's but, the problem. We don't know that for sure because we don't actually know what the savings are going to be and it's based on the savings. The net cost will be known. The savings, the question for the savings is will it offset the debt costs? We don't know. So this may end up costing us money anyways. It could potentially cost us <laughs> during the four years. All right, I would want to vote on this unless I knew that there wasn't somebody who would turn off the lights first. It's just a, some, something as simple as that. I'll be honest with you. Like, I think this was going to switch us to those papers. We have an office that the person comes out with the bathrooms. I wouldn't even have the room. And what is exactly the installation and street of advertising, printing, legal, and financing? Like, what is all those things? That, that's boilerplate language for bonding. We, we, so that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, it, what what happened if if you read the entire ordinance, <clears throat> it's going to say bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. Essentially, that's flexibility mm -hmm. to issue a short term note or Which other is, finance. Was, now, how did it start? Did somebody approach us? Or did we go into what we call it resource? Um, this mean, is how actually did this, how did this happen? Yeah, our awesome. facilities director has actually been working on this for several years. And they said about three, four years ago, this was actually discussed 
quite extensively as part of the high school project. I can't and believe they didn't, they didn't live in the middle of the schools with lights shut off. It was value exactly. engineering. Yeah. They were I can't to, believe that was the most stupid stuff you've ever heard. That's, that's you that's build true. a brand new school and you don't put that technology in the schools? Well, I mean, we're, we're still debating whether wrapping the duct work. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. I there's, just, there's a number of things that were value engineered within the project. And that happens in every big project, yeah. especially huge projects. There are things you're going to come so this, to. So this was a stuff the facilities director did. Did anybody ever talk? I mean, obviously, you talked to the contractor, but did you talk to ever sources to see if this is did somebody talked to ever sources to see if this is has it worked in other towns? It saying. has actually. One uh, the firms that we've been talking with, the one who gave us the specific numbers had just come off a project in Litchfield. Um, we have another one who's giving a quote and actually was concerned about our timing initially without knowing because they were just completing a similar project in Manchester and are working a similar one in Simsbury. No, but I'm saying, does anybody have a length of time, like four years, five years, to see if this worked? That's it's that a know. track record. That that's I what I'm saying. And keep in mind, this is this is appropriating the authority to go into that. This is not approving the project. Right. Anything that would be decided ultimately, the council would have to say yes. That project. The council looks at it and says, "We're just not comfortable. We don't believe the numbers. We're not comfortable with it. We just don't want to do it. Whatever reason." The council has every right to say, no, we're not approving this project. The ordinance is out there. Um, but it's not like I'm, first of all, I, I wouldn't just run out and borrow, but I also wouldn't be able to. Even if this ordinance is out there, any bond ordinance has to be signed off by the, not only myself, but the town manager and the mayor. That's just what they have to have in the bond council would use that. So we could never use this financing in any way that doesn't mean. Um, I guess you could say my approval, but more importantly, the town manager and the mayor's approval. And the mayor's not going to just run out and do that without the council backing and supporting. If the council approves it, does it come back to us for approval? Not the project. No. I guess I'm just trying to learn the trust me, 255 percent. It's 25 percent. I'm just, I just, I don't know much more. I mean, Kevin, yeah, I just, it's not a lot of information, exactly. It's just not a lot of stuff. I, I look at the one and a half million I see two projects. I look at the fact that we spent $14 million. That's the thing you get to be gun shy. We still haven't gotten anything out of it. Right. Uh, this, is, this is maybe we're going to save money. Yeah, maybe. Well, you, long term. You're talk, I'm talking long like four term. years. But yeah. But we didn't even you know, $14 still. So, you know. That's fine. I mean, I, I would want to know that they exhausted other, other ways. To, to cut that nine hundred thousand dollar bill down before we have to buy automatic light switches, because we can't have somebody assigned to go turn off a light. I mean, Jerry, you got a question? Yeah. Um, so Kevin, you said that this has been years in the making. If I, mean, I switch to you, then is this on our ten-year plan? Is it, this project? I don't know. Is it, Kevin? No. Yes, this, this is. Oh, this Lighting is. upgrades at the schools. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where where is it? Do you know where it is in the priority list? This oh, this is the this is what they were talking about for the lighting upgrades. Yeah. Okay. So is it is this uh at the top of the list or bottom? It's not the top of the list, it's high on the facilities list. Because yeah, one, one of my other Thoughts on this too is we keep saying we don't want to borrow, we don't want to do this, we don't want more debt. Well, this is going to count as debt. I mean, and yet, you know, it's here, still here, here's another million. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, if, if, if we had said we weren't going to do any more debt this year, or we were going to take it another year, or whatever, I, I would be concerned if there was some part of this program that is going to go away. Right, that we wouldn't get if you know we decide we want to get more information. You mentioned the June thirtieth deadline for something. Uh, when you said net costs, I don't know. Is there some incentives that they're putting into this yes. that we will lose if we don't do it before June thirtieth? Yes. Okay. Can you, can you just go over those again? Um. Well, I'll give you some perspective. These are some numbers. I'll give you the high school perspective. The project is projected to cost $725,000. Okay. 
it's gross cost. The utility incentives, so just the, the regular incentive that Eversource would apply from that money I was talking about pulled from every bill is $287,000. That doesn't go away. That's the part that they have to pay. In addition to that, they have the bonus incentive. This is what goes away, 630-21, if the project is not installed. So it's not approved. We have to install the items by that. It takes, it takes about uh, six to eight weeks from acceptance to ordering materials to completion. That's about all we got. That's why we're trying to move this space. That would be an additional $44,000 of savings. And then there's an additional 10,000 we would get, which essentially there's a, a federal energy tax savings program. We don't qualify because as a municipality, we don't pay federal taxes. We can sign that over to them, which is exactly what we did on the other project, but the large project. Um, it's basically, they will give us credit for the energy savings they will get. You can probably parallel it a little bit to the tax incentives for affordable housing. But they kind of they put the money up knowing that they're getting the tax incentives. It's a similar setup there. So all total, the seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollar project cost is assumed to have a net cost of three hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. Annual energy savings of eighty-eight thousand. Maintenance savings of twenty thousand gives you an annual savings of ninety-six thousand dollars spread over. 3.97 years is the payback, but spread over four years. It says your monthly payment will be $8,000 and the savings will be just over $8,000. So, you know, if we didn't do it, then the estimated savings, $44,000, you need approximately $11,000 of that. So you would basically be paying. Right, because the CLNP portion, that, that stays intact. In Correct. And you get yeah. ourselves later. So you, you know, by not doing it now, you pretty much have, unless, unless Pura convinces or forces Eversource to continue it beyond 630, it would translate to, on average, for the four years, $11,000 of annual cost put into the project. Without that, we stand a, a very good chance of not having the savings pay for the annual cost for those four years. After the four years, all of that benefit then goes to the town. And is there any estimate on the things that they're going to change, what the lifespan of those is? Um, I know you're tired. You, you said in four years we'll recapture, but are they putting things in that are supposed to last 10 years? Five years. <laughs> well, that's the question. Well, no, the, the yeah. LEDs are actually intended for a much longer life. I, I don't yeah. have those pages. I only have yeah. proper because I, I, I mean, that, that, that would be important to me. I mean, the, 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 but that's a good consideration, the longevity of the project. Well, I mean, you know, do we want to wait 10 years to get our payback? You know, I mean, uh, or, or after six years, would we have to be putting more money in? I mean, I, I like the fact that we're taking advantage of incentives. Um, you know, I, I, I always like it when someone else is going to pay for part of, you know, what we're going to get. Um, as long know. as it works out that way. Well, yeah, and I think we're all a little gun shy on, on the last year. We don't have to do it. Yeah. You're not asking a question. I wish you got this here facility now. Let me ask you another question. With today's technology, can we change the switch and make them go on and off? <laughs> So, well, I mean, can we do that? Just out of curiosity. Yes, yes. I, I will tell you that this plan. Uh, we have people that should be able to do that. We have to do that, right? Yeah. Can you do yeah. that? Can you do that? Well, I, I've done that. Keep, keep, keep in mind, the high school it's is not, not complicated. It's not. I don't know. Just, the high school is not right. the equivalent of switching out in a room. Or no, I'm just saying that. High school is not. That's what I'm saying. I don't know the details. I mean, it's different. I mean, obviously. You're talking you know, about this, changing out all of yeah, the light fixtures. You're talking about. Oh, even, even, just, you know, even just going to those switches right along the wall. It's replacing those with the old ones. The sensors. The kids get in. It's got out like a kind of certain 20 minute thing. When you walk out, the lights go off. Um, the incentives, Jerry's right. It's those incentives. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> Anything else? Let's take a vote on this. All in favor of the of our incentives. 
Please say aye. 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 Now you have to use the other one. All, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All opposed to doing this project. Please say opposed. Well, your 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 opposition is to the bonding, not necessarily to the project. Yeah, the, I mean the bond. The bond. Let's, let's, the who's opposed? Let's have a motion. Let's do. Let's clean it up. Let's pass. Who's in favor of doing? Jerry already made the motion. Jerry, I just give a second. second. Okay, all in favor of the motion. Aye. Aye. Now, I guess um, I'll do the bonding. Yep. And I think we're going to talk to yeah. the town council when yeah, the true. numbers come out and say this is a bad deal. That's right. You know what I'm saying. Exactly. If, I would be I would be on with that as long as we have a voice with the town council that says, "Listen, you guys got to really seriously do these numbers." You know, we'll have an unofficial voice. voice. Listen, we have, that's what I'm saying. They yeah. got to understand that this. We're approving this, but we don't think it's a good I, idea. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. We'll do it in, we'll do it on the protest if it's an action that they yeah. Well, I think if you heard also heard, I mean the mayor he did say he wanted to hear mayor. actually what <laughs> you guys had to say. Um, but before you can vote, they have to vote. So um, but again, this is for the bonding. If the project yeah. doesn't go forward, right. the bonding okay. doesn't happen. So is it is good five zero or yeah. five zero? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Even, you got that data. <laughs> even Mr. Brady agreed. No, so uh, where are we? We're approved. Just like Five said, zero. Yes. Make sure the question's good. Yes, <laughs> and if he doesn't, he'll go turn the lights off himself. I, I like the idea of switching. To this uh, I would. Uh, there's, you know, sometimes simple solutions. Okay, we're going to spend a million and a half dollars to change the light bulbs that are good now. Well, let's just turn them off, and that'll save money. Why spend a million and a half dollars to turn off lights? I know it's more complicated than that, but realistically. And when the project comes forward, when the actual proposal, whichever vendor we pick, whichever one comes forward, um, it will be realistically, it will be on the facilities director to present why it is project is a good idea. That's right, exactly. <clears throat> and he's intimately familiar from the high school project forward. So he has all of the history. Actually, I think he's probably the only one left. He's, he's going to have to move pretty darn quickly. Yeah. All this is going to happen. I mean, to get the incentives, you got to get the council on board or whatever. Yeah. You guys just take a ride by the schools. Oh, it's I know what they say. It's, it's just beyond belief. And that's what's the problem. There's that the many lights on. I mean, there's like a there, there's like a glow all over McGee. Every light is on in the park a lot. Nobody's there. I mean, the police need lights on, but they don't need them all on. One on each end is fine. Yeah. They just need to see activity in a lot. And, and the high school, you drive by and it's lit up like a palace. And it, it's 9, 9, 9 30 at night, and nobody's there. This was during COVID. I mean, the schools weren't even open, and all the lights were on. I drive a bike going $900,000. Nobody can turn off the lights. Well, now we're going to pay the most. All right. Three and four, I think we can discuss together. So let's lump it in and make the meeting shorter. I, I, I suggested, Mr. Delaney here that I put these on because I was listening to the town council meeting on the budget briefly. And uh, the mayor, the mayor had disagreed with the pie chart, so did Mr. Grady, and the fact that the numbers don't from 61. So I thought we have a discussion because we've had this discussion about two years ago. I remember Jerry passed that discussion one time. Let's let's eliminate 61. And at the time, the mayor did not want to eliminate 61. And then we put the police, the security, and the, we provided security to the Board of Education, security officers. And during the budget process, it was before you, Mr. Green, during the budget process, we have put it into the Board of Education. We felt it should have been in the Board of Education's budget. The mayor sent us a note through Mr. Delaney here was that he preferred to have it in 61 because we didn't want them to use it as a hostage situation when they cut the budget or whatever, okay? I mean, that was his logic. And we didn't give an argument and we put it in 61. We said, you know what, fine, you know, if you want it in 61, we'll put it in 61. And it's been in 61. The problem I have, and I think we have a discussion here, is that if, if, there's, if, if it truly bothers everybody that this pie chart, which I personally find irrelevant, the pie chart. I mean, I'm going to give you my opinion. I really don't care if the Board of Education has a pie chart that says we spent 40 percent or 50 percent. It's an irrelevant number because at the end of the day, a zero increase is a zero increase. It doesn't matter if we spent 60. It doesn't matter if we show 60 or 70 percent 
the budget still comes to zero, a zero increase. And where I took offense was that the mayor said that this budget wasn't, uh, what was his word, uh, legitimate. Uh, is that what he used, Mr. Delaney? Legitimate, because he, he asked you, I mean, what was the, I don't want to put words in his mouth. Um, characterize the budget is, I believe, wrong. Wrong. Because I had asked the question what, what he meant by that. And I think, and, I think it was just the confusion. Right, and, I, and the budget was not wrong. The fact that we have 61. So the question I have to the board of finance is that if we're going to really think about eliminating 61, we should have a discussion and start opening up discussion with the board of education and start saying, hey, listen, we're going to eliminate 61. We're going to put the nurses in your budget. We're going to put everything in your budget. And then it'll be more Then we don't have any arguments over the pie. The people in town will actually know how much we spent on education. I don't think it's the right thing to do personally myself. I guess think the debt, whatever the debt that we have for the high school, we own the property. I mean, the town of Berlin owns the property. I don't think we should put the bond debt into the Board of Education's budget, my personal opinion, but you know, that's just my opinion. And, and, and I think to just pick on this pie chart to make it look, I think what it is, is I think we're trying to pit the, the, the town's people against the Board of Education no, people. No, you're missing the whole point of this yeah, whole thing, Sam. You're off the left field. No, I'm not. You no, are. No, you no, really are out of left field. Really I'm going to explain to you yes. exactly what the problem is. Right. All right? Go ahead. We had a board of finance meeting with the Board of Education. Right. At that meeting on March 3rd, I brought up this pipe, this chart right here. All right? right. I'm familiar this, with this. This is fake. This is bullshit right here. Plain and simple. That the Board of Education put out to us these numbers. And we all know it. Everybody here knows this is not correct. That same meeting, Kevin said, no, the accurate number is 59%. Because the meeting before that, we had discussed exactly what that was. Jerry and I went over this, over the 65.2%, which was the number in the audit. And we came to the conclusion that the best thing to do was to have Kevin come up with a number of 59%. That was the number presented at the meeting uh, before the March 3rd meeting with the Board of Education. The Board of Education pulled this out on March 3rd, and I said, this is wrong. And you cut me off and said, you don't care about the pie charts, you don't care about no, the I don't. I, I don't. Well, we're the Board of Finance, we care about the numbers. But the, but the, but the pie charts are relevant. Well, it's not, it's not it's not it is. Sam, it, it is not irrelevant. We have a town going to vote on a referendum on April 27th, and they have this number, 50%. They have Arosha's number, 56%. They have the audit number of 65.2%, and we have the number from Kevin that's 59%. That's four numbers that the right. town has to decipher which one is accurate. Well, I mean, even we should be embarrassed as a board of finance to not be able to say this is 59% is the number, 56% is the number. We should not have allowed the Board of Education to put this out in our budget meeting and say that 50% of the budget is presented is, is what it is and that Berlin is the lowest of all these on the chart. Because if you go per student of every single one of these towns, we're higher. Where's their I'm per not, student not, chart? Where's their, right. they I'm put not, it out last right. year. I'm not arguing with you with that. I'm not arguing with that. It's, yeah, it's embarrassing. I agree with you. With you. No, I'm not arguing with you on that, but I'm just saying that in my opinion, Whatever the Board of Education puts on a chart, I really personally don't, I don't even look at those charts because I find them irrelevant. It's what the Board of Finance it's was It's not irrelevant. 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 No, but Jerry, you know, Jerry, you know exactly what I'm saying. The Board of Education should have been told this is not accurate. But we're not going to audit their package. We're not going to audit their package. There's probably a million other things that's, that's wrong right. in, their, in their package. But the point is, the point is, we're allowing this to happen as the Board of Finance. And we're not even coming out and saying this is not the right number. And we're not even saying what the right number is. Well, you and I had talked about how to cure that problem for yeah. next year. And, and I think and that is to have Kevin budget. put in another chart for what the budgetary pie chart would look like. What he has in there right now is expenditures on the entity-wide basis. And we had talked about having him put one in for the general fund 
next year so that people can see this is where your tax dollars are going as far as that allocation, which is probably what that's trying to show. This right? well, which one? Well, can I clarify a couple things? Sure. Just one answer. First, I want to say debt is not in 61. Debt is separate. Yeah, that, whatever you do in 61, debt will, no, will no, remain. Yes, that's going to be. Um, but, but also, there's no way you can say that um, the town owns the school property and the building. So therefore, it's not a board of education debt. It's a town debt. How can it be no, a town debt? A we don't debt. have schools. We, we don't have school students. We don't need the land or the building. But it's our obligation as a town to make sure that yeah. the school buildings are safe. But you a lot point. of towns. Yeah. A lot of towns will allocate or show yeah. how much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a problem. Yeah, we have to show it for for disclosure purposes. Yeah. How much is school? How we, much is job? Yeah, I don't have a problem. We can't be telling people yeah. that that's not included in this and that you're. So you want to include the word? The word. We're shortchanging our students. No, what I want to do is I want to get down to having Kevin show a general fund pie chart like we had thought using the categories and debt service is a separate category within that. And, and that follows the accounting standard. As the point the mayor was making is right in the same budget packet that at the delivery when he was there, he says, I'm looking at the screen and a rush puts up 56% and then Julie goes up and puts her best. It's fifty percent, and we're the lowest of every town. Yeah, but my, we should be embarrassed. She said. Yeah, but my well, it's okay. okay. We I'm should not be embarrassed. embarrassed. I'm, I'm not embarrassed. I'm not. Embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed either. But it's not right for people to get this information. Right, they're voting on this. But my, I'll, be, I'll be honest. With you. I'm in the same sense of I don't care about my grass. My grass get fucked. We'll switch it around. We can be the top one on that list. Yeah, that's I right. look at these numbers. I think we were very good. With I don't agree. I don't agree with. Oh, I don't like the graphs. I, I can't stand pie charts because they, they listen. It depends on the narrative. You can make them look whatever. They that, low, they can look high. What matters to us should be these pages right here. Yeah, but well, the, the point is, we're we're presenting this to the town, okay? And this board is the the town but the board of it. it's not the board of finance. And whether we like it or not, the town is looking at these numbers. But Sam, we're allowing the board. Of but I can't tell. I called, up, I called her up and I told her, let's use less charts or whatever. I can't dictate, none of us can dictate to the Board of Education. If they want to put a chart out, fine. We can put a counter chart up and say, you know, this is not, you know, this is how we look yeah. at it and, and, and compare both charts. I don't have a problem with that, but it's not our it's not our job to tell the Board of Education not to present their their Well, their then don't advice. expect it. Then don't but, expect but the, the, town, the town council to not question it. But the, put but my problem, my problem, problem with the town council, the whole town council. I'm not picking on the mayor. I'm talking about the whole town council. They presented these charts not for for God knows for 20 years. No, no, I never heard any town council all of a sudden made a big deal about it. This is a new one. No, they because, because I looked at they've, last all, year's they've always presented charts. Last year's that project, project, they went by students. Students right, but they've always projected we're charts. higher now, so they went they went away from that. Okay, but I mean they got charts. But at the end of the day, I think we should have a discussion on sixty one. I think I think that would that would solve some of that pie chart. I think we start. Certainly, certainly don't think we should pie. separate sixty one. Sixty one is the school expense anyway. You just combine for the pie chart. You combine it with the with the general fund. Just, just that's the total. Just to be clear, the fifty six percent is based on that approach. So yeah, it is sixty and sixty one. Yeah. It recognizes um, the the revenue elements like ECS that reduce that element yeah. of education, but it also recognizes other elements throughout the budget um, where there's revenues that offset a number of other departments. The numbers kind of went all over the place. The 59% was during the initial budget presentation. So the budget that you ultimately sent forward to the meeting is actually different than the budget that came forward. Um, and, and the methodology in there was a little bit different. I do want to say, I don't think, I think right off the bat, you can say the 65%, I don't believe should be used. As I mentioned at the council meeting, the 65% includes what they refer to as on behalf payments. The state's making payments to the teacher's retirement fund, millions of dollars of payments that are considered education expenses in the annual financial report. They're not education expenses of the town. I mean, we all pay because we're taxpayers of the state of Connecticut and we all own a huge unfunded liability. Um, but I, I think the 65, from an accounting standpoint, from um, ensuring that we comply with generally accepted accounting principles, absolutely valid. Um, 
But as I would say anytime when I was in the private sector too, accounting is nice and it's an important report card, but you don't run a successful enterprise off of accounting. And that's as somebody who does it. Um, I don't think the 65% is a fair representation of what you're asking the taxpayers to pay. And you're never going to find that as a comparable number in any charts anyone else is going to do. It's no one else will do it. But you, the 56 you understand what I'm saying, though, Jerry, because every one of these accounts that comp goes to accounting a little different. Yeah. And for them to take this and, and dump Berlin at the bottom and try and shame people <clears throat> into thinking that they're, they're, we're somehow abusing our children is, is really pretty. Dis I, no. I'm not very happy. See, with maybe, that. I, maybe I, I have think, a thicker skin for stuff like that. Well, you know, to me, the taxpayers should at least have an honest number. I don't. I don't go for this. Uh, you know, it's it's close enough thing. We can do better than this. Certainly, we know that this well, is absolutely but we, wrong. But we can't direct the board of ed how to present. I think. Budget. Well, let me put it this way. I think we could have pushed them a lot harder at that meeting. We had the opportunity, but that, that wouldn't change anything. That wouldn't change your mind. That's that's what we are looking for. I think then the, the we're distinction. just going to let them keep continue to, to, to. Yeah, that's why we're yeah, here. That's we evaluate what, what they really. <laughs> I just don't, uh, you know, people that, like I said, people. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, we can't just like pick. I don't know what the word is. We can't just pit each other all against each other. We got to be able to get along with each other. I mean, you got to say that's exactly what the chart is designed to do. Well, but but you got to ignore. You got to, you know, what's her? I'm not making excuses for the president of the board of education. She, this is her first year. Maybe you know she could have done it differently. I'm not making her excuses for her. But I mean, let's not, let's, you know, we. No, Board of Ed in this town has always been a nonpartisan yeah. Board of Ed. Yeah. They come up with whatever crazy they want. Stuff. So don't, I'm not, they, it's not just this board. No, I mean, they come up with crazy stuff. So you, you got to be able to ignore some of this crazy stuff. They I, do. I think, I think those graphs, and this is an have whatever, if you try to prove a point, you base on somebody else who's charged to prove a point, it would be your point of view. Do that's what the chart is. That's what the chart is for. That's, that's why I don't pay attention to charts like that. But the, what I'm trying to explain to you is that they're using this, and we're going to we're giving this information to people to vote. No, and but the information you're giving people to vote is the fact that they got a zero mill increase. The charts are the charts. Are, that's not everybody's the charts only concerned about that. What are we going to do if this board of education budget gets voted down because it's too low? Well, then we'll are figure we it out. More money no, it's not going to get voted down because it's too low. How do you know? I guarantee it's, you, it's never, it's, ne it's never, children. it's never happened. It'll never it has happen. happened. When, when did this ever happen? It happened a little, two budgets ago. And it, and no, it got voted approved, not that it was. Well, I voted too low. They have to come back and have money. For it. We didn't have money to anything. That board of finance. Did we ever have money? For it? I don't know. I, I think that was, the that, that, was I think that was the last council. The last budget. council meeting. Didn't they add a half a million? Yeah. No, yeah. No, the, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was, that was uh, not, that, that was. Uh, is that 16 or 17? Yeah. 2019, I believe. Yeah, no, it's before the Board of Finance. I think board. it was the last council budget. Yeah, and gave them, they gave them $500,000. You came in in a 16 vote, so you started yeah. in 17. I don't remember. But you can't say it won't happen because it has. Well, then we go along. But, but just because it says it's too low doesn't mean we have to add yeah. anything. If we think that was the right number, that's where we, we stand. You no, know, I'm just saying we're, we're making controversy because of, of stuff like this. I mean, there's no need for this. You're taking it too personal. You really have. Oh, I mean, don't tell me that, Sam. I mean, we're here to do a job to at least the No, you're doing a job. I understand that. No, I can't not, do I'm personal. Not gonna go, I'm not going to go, I don't care about this. No, we do care. No, but I mean, care about inaccurate information. Oh, wait, 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 but I do so care. But the yeah, point is the chart. No, I care. But the charts that I find those charts, I mean, I can make a chart that, that's going to that screwed my way. So I charts doesn't matter. matter. Who this cares? Was, this was with the budget package, and I think we could have done more. You could have done more as the board chairman. No, what am I going to do? Slap slap right right hand? Hand? What am I going to do? Slap on our hand? I mean, I'm trying to run All right, well, board. Maybe we just have to look, look at things to Well, the problem is that, you know, you put, you put a chart together like that, you don't know what assumptions they made. That's right. That could be absolutely correct for the, the assumptions and the nets that they put in there, netting the ECS, netting other revenue sources. But we don't do it that way. Well, if that's what they're purporting to do, and they've done that to every other town, well, that's fine. But that's not, they're, taking they're not telling us. Sorry, they're taking other towns and they have no idea what the accounting, their accounting practices are. Maybe and they they're do. pulling their numbers Maybe. offline and saying, look, if Berlin's slowest, 
only because we have to rein in the Board of Education with Department 61. Otherwise, the, all that stuff would have been getting the 3.2% increase too. We can't do that. That's why we have to have Department 61. Um, yes. I mean, we don't have to. We don't have to. Have I, mean, have I to thought it was the mayor. I thought it was the mayor who wanted to. Yeah, I mean, that's the, he's talking about 61. No, he wanted it before. He wanted it before. No, he wasn't talking about that. Oh, he wasn't? No, no, not at all. Oh, okay. No, he just wanted to know how come there were so many budget numbers. But it's, we only produced one budget number was zero. The Board of Finance produced a zero budget increase. That's what we mean, no. That's what we did. They're talking about how- But I don't care about the Board of Education. At the end of the day, the Board of Finance submitted a zero board, a zero well, million. Point is how it was arrived at, we cut their budget. We cut their budget. What was it, 4,000? Around that Something like yeah. that. After we're adjusting for the health insurance and then they got an addition. Right, right. That's how we got it. And, and if, the, if, the, if the mayor did not, or the council did not like what we gave, they had an opportunity to cut the Board of Education more. Right. They had that opportunity. If then no one liked that chart, you know, and it bothers everybody, he should have cut the Board of so Education more so than 400000 Sam, they had this the, they information the given to the public that's going to be voted. But if it bothered the council, Every one of them had a proposal, they could have proposed a couple of presentations. Every one of them, I don't care who it is. May I ask a question? Yeah. On, on this year's tax bill, there's been a request made that we can comply with, and, and we intend to. It's not a board finance decision, but I think it is something we should at least have a chance to weigh in on. The tax bill will be slightly revised. In the upper corner, it will identify for each person's tax bill how much money is considered education versus general government. And the way that's going to happen is a percentage for each will be given to um, the, the company that prints our tax. Well, how are you going to come up with the percentage? Well, that's the question is yeah. um, the 50% would be, I think of it as the board of ed budget. The 56% is the education budget, which is 60 and 61. Uh, does not include debt related to education, but just 16, 61. So it's really operating education costs. And what about direct revenue? Well, it, it nets that down. So the 56% nets out ECS. So it will be on a person's bill. It doesn't change their bill. It might change their mind, it might not. I mean, the bill is the bill. All it is is a percentage of what you had. So um, are you comfortable 56% listed as education. And they're by, and it'll be dollars, it won't be the percentage, but 56% of each person's bill would be identified as education, as going to education. That's what the numbers are. And does that include that? That does not include that. No, then it wouldn't be accurate. It wouldn't be accurate. So you want that included? Yeah. Absolutely. How are you going to not include that? No, that's, 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 and that's why I'm asking the question is because so how do you not include that when it, it, it's that on a building that the Board of Education is yeah. occupying? But what's the purpose to be with the Board of Education? No, the purpose the is, is to say no, what's the purpose of this? So we can have the anti-education group against the education group and not instead of having a united town and everybody working for the benefit. What's the purpose of it? Is this the purpose just so that, you know, I mean, the purpose of displaying it? No, I mean, oh. the purpose of adding everything in one thing. If you want to display it, I mean, it would be everything. The average person is just, the average person's just going to look at the bill they owe and just whatever. Mm -hmm. They're not going to look. I mean, I'm, because I'm, people are asking. Who's asking? All of a sudden, I've been, I, I, no, hold on, hold on. I lived in this town and I've served on Board of Finances in the past. I've never heard anybody ask. All of a sudden, this year, I, 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 all of a sudden, this past few months, it's a miracle. Everybody's called the mayor or called you or called the How much percentage are you going to spend on education this year? If you guys want to, don't want to spend any money on education, then let's just let the mayor cut the education budget and we'll all go away. I mean, so what do you want to hide? I don't want to hide anything. Want to hide anything but what do you want to do? You want, to, you want to call it education, but not include the buildings that the education. But I find it a responsibility. That doesn't make any sense. I find it, um, we have a different opinion. I find it a responsibility as a town. But what I see in other towns is when they do those kind of breakdowns, they have a debt service, they have a general government, yeah. they have a board debt. Debt service is a separate category. 
I don't know if you're going to have a second one or not. The intent is two, but I can see if three is possible. You could do three debt service. Why well, not? Why not? Because there's some, some space on the bill. Yeah, it's in the bigger bill. <laughs> I mean, you, if you're going to do it, you got to do it. So, <laughs> so, you, so in your, your, your percentages, you were going to allocate that service? No. No. Oh, you were going to leave it off? I was going to. The 50 with the debt service, I believe, is 59%. More than that, 61, close to 61. That's but if you're going to add that service, then you have the three columns if that, that service. So you're just going to say, um, you're just going to say the Board of Education is and then that's it. The numbers are going to get yeah. uh, That was the idea. It's going to split. Towns show what will we spend in public safety and you know, the right. And there are, I mean, different states have, have different setups of bills. Yep. One of the things we're required to put on our bill that uses a little bit of space is how much money we received from the state in the budget, how much we assumed, and therefore, what would the mill rate have been had this not been, had your money not come back to you, essentially. Things like that are included that are required in Connecticut that are not. We, we've looked at bills. This came up after the bills went out last year, but it's been a discussion for a little while. We've looked at several different types of bills from other places. Um, I can see if we can do, I mean, we could do education, general government, and then that service, yeah, service. Well, then it, at least it would add up to the total, yeah. Well, the idea was the debt was going to sit in general government. Oh, oh. well, that's what I asked. It was, it was, oh, no, I asked. It Sorry, if you're going to put it, you know, yeah. in the allocator, we're going to leave it in general yeah. government, which is where it sits today. That's where I think it belongs to. Why? Well, we went through this. We have a fundamental disagreement. That's what. So if I can add three, I can do education, which would be 1661. Debt service, which would be all of it, education, non-education, all of that separate line, how much is going to debt service. And then general government, which would include everything from public safety to administration to parks and rec, all of that. And, and are you doing that on a gross basis or a net basis? The percentages, I would do it off of the net basis. Which is where the fifty-six percent came from. So if we were to look at that show, so you would show fifty-six percent would be education, uh, 10, 11 percent would be debt, and then the balance would be general government, which would include the pension. Which yeah. Let me say that's better than trying to split it up fifty-fifty. Sorry, it's, it's better than it's better than splitting it fifty-fifty like it is, but I still think that is. Education, that is education, that town, that is town. Well, ideally, we can spike that out and just have debt as debt. Because 11% is very high. And that is what it is, but we're working it down. You should show the town debt and the Board of Education debt. It's two separate line items. If we have the space. I just, it, it's going to depend on how much space is what? That's what we should do. We tell people that the debt is not just town, it's part of the Board of Education also. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, that's fair. When I pay my taxes, when I pay my taxes in town, I don't care if it goes to the school. I only pay one amount. The amount goes to debt. Period. So, like, what would it matter? I mean, what would it matter to break down? My amount's not going to change. I'm not going to say I'm not going to pay that amount. I'm only going to pay the town debt. I don't have big, I don't big education. It's just information for the tax. No, it's okay. You can split it. You can put like information for the tax. You could put top debt board of education that if you have the room. If, if we have the room. It's small print. Very small. Okay, can I have a motion? So, to... so, so we pretty much, as far as department 61. Nobody okay. wants to live in the world, okay, right? Everybody's good with department right. 61. Well, I mean, we do. I, I don't have think... more control over it. Absolutely. I, 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 so who manages that department? Okay, okay, because I, because I was under management. the impression that someone wanted to get rid of it. No, 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 no. Because no, we no, did no. look at that a couple of years ago. We did want to get rid of it. No, that would be a step in the wrong direction. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, wait. No, I can't ask you that. Oh, Jesus. We have... Oh, come on, we gotta hear the good stuff. Oh, All right, I missed it. Go ahead. I'm gonna be quick. Um, I will come right to the pension. Um, one of the inactives we expected to request did request his money. We now have the payout calculation. So I expect roughly around the end of the month, he will get paid out. Um, that will bring down both the liability and um, our assets by about $850,000. So uh, we had three 
of the eight actives request numbers. They're looking somewhere between May and December or May and December or periods between as well. So there's at least three of the eight who are, they're all eligible, but at least three of the eight are seriously looking at it for different reasons. But um, we could, I could very well be coming back to you. If all three were to go, I'd be looking for numbers and I would need to come back for somewhere between three and three and a half million unless interest rates either spike or fall through the floor. Fortunately, interest rates are up almost a full percentage point from where we were when we talked about this a year ago. We're from 1.39, we're sitting around 2.3 right now percent for a 30-year treasury. It's extremely low, um, but 1% up is better than where we were. So that might have a positive on our positive. budget. Yeah. Um, the only other thing, I, I changed the risks and opportunities format a little bit. So now there's a projected low, projected high. So it's kind of easier to add up. At the bottom, I did the net projection, low and high. But then I also stripped out the pension payout since we typically use savings for that. I wanted to show that in there. And then I also, the American Recovery Act, I took 50% of what we're supposed to be receiving, which is 2,017,000 from various numbers. That does not include the county funds. I've still to date not been able to get any clarification and nobody I know has been able to get a clarification on what does that mean for us? We had a county form of government and we were a county. We would, we would know what that is because it would have been in there. I know Senator Blumenthal and Senator Murphy worked hard to get Connecticut to have sort of a proxy of that. So we expect something more. The, um, the money is, we just got our first notification to give them federal IDs and DUNS numbers, other things today from Martin Heft, who's the undersecretary at OPM, who administers the money from the feds through the state onto the town. So, Step one of just basically putting that information out there has started. We have, all the towns have to get back by May 4th, so the money is imminent. By May 11th, Secretary of the Treasury owes everybody guidance on how the money may be used. Um, as, as is expected, I know um, there was a notice in the news the other day the Ohio governor and attorney general, I guess, had sued saying that it was a breach of the state's autonomy, so to speak, and the feds put the restriction on not being able to use it to offset tax cuts. And uh, the attorney general came out, or the Justice Department, sorry, came out and indicated that they don't agree with that. They defended Congress and the president with that. It will probably end up in court. But at this point, we have to live with whatever rules they put in. Kind of follows the principle that if they're issuing the grant, they get to establish the rules. Um, and I do know, I don't think it's the president or someone from Treasury did indicate, you, know, you don't have to take the money if you don't want that, that's fine. Uh, but I did wanna call that out. It's three different projections. I expect that these numbers will improve over the next couple of months, but we have several projects that are going and there's several encumbrances that history would tell me are probably a little bit heavy. So I do see this being a little bit better, uh, but I am trying to refine it a little bit more as we go through. The parks and rec revenue, I could see that improving. Obviously, I shared with you some of the information that's out here. Obviously, the governor came out with welcome news for May 19th and opening things up. Debbie, had, our parks and rec director, had actually provided that information to the council. So I don't know if she changed what she said tonight versus what was written. Obviously, we're all kind of working with a moving target. So to the extent there's more freedoms, she certainly enjoys and does a good job with the pools, with various programs. And I think it would be welcome news if we can safely run programs more like they were two years ago rather than last year. I say all of that to basically say, June is a big month for Parks and Rec revenue, as you can imagine. May, June is when people are buying pool passes, sign up for a lot of those summer programs. So that number could improve depending on where we fall with all of this. Um, legal expenses is a moving target. I actually could see that not being a risk at all without the bonding, although we are incurring um, higher than even what I expected for costs defending uh, our situation on affordable housing on Atkins Street. It's just, it's been very expensive, but we are, we are moving along. And then um, position vacancies remain, remain in there. Tax collections continue to be strong. Um, we are coming very close to the current year budget number. So that's, that's very encouraging news, and uh, we continue to be there. The only other thing I wanted to bring up, a 
before I'll open up to questions is I had included all of you on a meeting notice for April 28th. Obviously, the vote is April 27th. We have to meet after, and there's two potential reasons. For that. If both budgets pass, we meet the next night, and it's to set the vote. Obviously, it's, zero, it's, it's two minutes of that. I mean, it's, it's, you vote literally to do that. My ask would be that if they both pass, and hopefully they do, that we just do it virtually and we don't meet in person. <laughs> if either one or both fail, um, I have reserved town council chambers if you want to meet in person, or um, you could do it virtually. And you're, basically what happens is if it fails, it comes back to you. You can do nothing. You can cut, add, you have all that discretion. Um, and then you have to send it on to the council. If it both pass, you have two days by charter to set the mill rate. So that's why I was due it the next night. And we could do it at a different time. If you don't want seven o'clock, it's a special meeting. So we can set the time for whatever you want. <coughs> um, I will be sending the agenda out, but. Um, if the budget fails, we'll meet in person. If the budget passes, we'll set the mill rate, we'll meet in virtual process to meet it for two months. Exactly. Are you guys all good with that? Yeah, if it fails, we'll have to be in person. And that'll be in council chambers. So, okay, I will send this out and have it posted so people will know. That was my only thing. If you had any questions, thank you. Uh, on the uh, unexpended education account, the 2%. Yep. Uh, nothing's happened on the Hubbard fire alarm and the HVAC. They continue to be in design mode. Um, Hubbard, they are looking to pay out the last part of the design mode and now move forward, but they were designing the system. This is actually a pretty substantial upgrade, even more so than what was done at McD, wiring and other things. The system's pretty old. It's, it's a welcomed improvement. Hopefully budget passes and um, Willard would be next on the list. And then the last one to do would be um, um, Griswold. <laughs> I, I didn't think those were that, I, you know, in my own. Well, I just didn't think those were very complex projects. I thought they were things that could get done. The HVAC is an interesting proposition. Is the, uh, the um, facilities director has identified an opportunity to take this money and potentially buy both units. And then if we have surplus money, we may transfer some consulting services money from this year's budget into a capital account to carry over and a combination of our existing facility staff and some outside contractors for some of the more technical things. So rather than doing just unit one, could potentially take this money and some carryover operating money that's put into the capital account, and potentially do both units of the key and get both of them taken care of and upgraded. So we are, we are intentionally holding right there to see how we play out into May and if the money is available, we think it's a good idea. He, he approached me, and I think that's a good idea that you could take two capital projects off the list. And now have funding for one, but if we could do it with modest carryover of surplus and get both units, especially at a school where we have a history of air quality issues that cost the town millions of dollars, it would be a positive for the community. So that one I think is going to sit probably for another month or two and see how that plays out. I haven't received it yet. Um, I don't, they didn't meet this past week because it's a school vacation. So I expect that I would probably get that on Thursday, but probably Monday. I don't know what, um, what that will look like. Obviously with the situation with the superintendent, uh, things are a little bit different than normal. I haven't heard any specifics. He's I've heard he's progressing. He's he got released at Hartford High School today. It's not a board. board. It's going to take about eight to 10 weeks for recovery. Because what had happened was that the deer hit him. Deer hit him. He didn't get the deer, the deer hit him. So, drips, it's going to take about eight to 10 weeks. I'm very lucky. It was serious. I'm just lucky to be alive. I thought he hit the deer, but the story was that the deer hit him. I have one more thing that I sort of want to weave in a different question. Um, but uh, you're, you 
mention uh, the BNA at, at risk here. So that what you're saying, three to 400, you're, you're saying they're in danger of not hitting their revenue budget by three or 400? Yeah, okay. So along those lines then, um, we had the town attorney talk to us a while back at our March 17th meeting. And he suggested at that time that we, could, we, we re look at proposals um, based on the uh, RFP that was originally put together and there were no respondents to it. Can you tell me? And you may not know, or you may know, has anything been done with this or are they waiting to get some, someone to tell them? Um, we actually had a call today with an outside consultant who has a history not only in the nursing arena, but actually consulting a number of enterprises similarly. Um, and where we are going is uh, they're going to craft up some potential scenarios of what could be done with the DNA, everything from the referral concept to there is not. They're going to bring that to Roche and myself. If you want, we can allow you to review as well. The intent is to actually bring that forward to State Department of Public Health to determine from a regulatory standpoint, are there any obstacles, issues, alternatives in any of those various scenarios so that we can get an understanding from a regulatory standpoint. In discussing the different options the consultant did indicate that there are, there are requirements that we have to agree to. For example, if we can't just outsource the nurses, if the administrator is going to hold out the DNA as a um, nursing organization, then the administrator has to exhibit uh, leadership and oversight over those nurses. So they can't outsource that piece of it. So they would therefore need nurses in order to be able to then conduct any activity in the firm. So that's where we went down the path of trying to figure out what are the parameters from a regulatory standpoint to doing this. That's the latest that we've had. We have not updated the RFP for this. In the first step, and this was a Roche, myself, Wendy, the director, and then this consultant, the first step is to try to understand sort of the playing field we're living under from a regulatory standpoint. Um, you know, we obviously have the parameters of the local charter, um, but we don't, we still have to live within the rules of the Department of Public Health because that's who's licensed us. So we wanna to try to understand that and then be able to say, okay, given, the, given what options we might have, how do we go forward with potentially putting an RFP out there to help us? Um, I will tell you that it was not, based on the conversation we had today, it was not encouraging, from my vantage point, um, that a referral option, bringing the nursing numbers down and making it a referral agency, is a viable option from a regulatory standpoint. That's why we're trying to get more concrete <coughs> guidance and direction. I don't think you can do anything until you change the charter. So that, um, of making our referral thing just not. Uh, that was not how it sounded, but we want we want to get something more definitive. We you know Roche really where he went with it was we'd like to have something more concrete from the State Department of Public Health that can be shared out with the Board of Finance and with the council so that we truly know what we're working from. Uh, as as you know, even the town attorney said he's not an expert in this arena. Uh, I don't think you can do anything without the nurses unless you change the charter. You cut their budget. That's it. You got to cut their budget in half. That's the only way to do it. They operate. And well, we have to leave them staff at the same time. We have to, we have have to, to let them operate, but we can't let Just them at a very reduced level. Yeah. 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 But other than that, there's no way. I don't care what you guys do. I'm telling you. you look at it. I'll give you guys a lot of credit. Now. It's but it's worth the credit. We just want to know. Yes, I, I, I am interested. They're almost uh, at the minimum staff impossible now, aren't they? Yeah. With the layoffs? 
when they have the three nurses, there's already one nurse who is actually out on workers' comp. So you're down to two nurses. That's really the bare minimum. Um, Why is that the bare minimum? What if you said you're, we, we don't expect your census to be over 30? Well, once you take on a patient, you have to yeah, be able stop to making, your, stop taking new patients. But then your revenue will dry up. Yeah. Well, we lose, we lose yeah. the same but I mean, money. if, if but, all we paid them was five hundred thousand dollars in expenses, we'd be ahead. We're still ahead of the game. We have no. You're losing money at a less rapid rate. Yes, I like that. Well, your your floor, your floor, even if you just had those new nurses, because you need to have the structure to be licensed, is north of six hundred thousand dollars. The salary benefits. Yeah, and it, it's this is just crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not going to stop this Motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. <laughs> no, not even a second. Huh? Sure. Oh. <laughs> She'll add it in. You'll add it in, right? Good night, Dana. Good night, Good night all. Good night.